when, when you talk to Walker's advisors, their sense is eventually Trump's going to implode and the party's going to look to someone who has a blue collar appeal, a little bit of a populist edge. And they think he's a conservative warrior. He's won three elections in Wisconsin. But they're nervous about Trump. They're nervous about the crowded field. They think as much as he may be an everyman candidate, that may not be enough. And so they're trying to maybe think, how can they? How can he become exciting? How can he start to really get more out of his, his base? One way and he didn't the, do was just now in this comment when he denounced Trump and he used the word denounce with less force than I've ever heard it employed. <laughs> I denounce him. This, <laughs> this was Scott Walker's week, right? You were there, I think, yes. um, at his launch. And what are we, we're not talking about Scott well, Walker. We're talking so about we know, Donald Trump. But do voters actually, does anyone make a voting determination based on ooh, who denounced Donald Trump more or less than the next I, guy? I think people get a gestalt of how, what they think a candidate's character is. And my argument would be that, that how they respond is a piece of their character. Now, wouldn't this have been an opportunity for Jeb Bush to stand up and, and make a bigger noise? It was certainly an opportunity, and how Bush responded tells us a lot about Bush. One, he, I think he's reluctant, if you talk to his allies, to engage in, in a major way with Trump, because if you enter a boxing ring with Trump, you could emerge bloodied. I mean, at this point in the summer, does Bush really want to have a major fight with Donald Trump? I don't think so. Uh, and I, I think when he looks at his own candidacy, he's not someone who's out there fighting. He's not a combative politician, and he hopes eventually the party comes back to someone who's a little more even-tempered. And doesn't he also think that four years ago, our conversation this, that summer was about Michelle Bachman, yeah. who is not president, last I checked. Right. Exactly. So your point is that you, there are these summer there's flavors that, that go away. In, there's one other thing that, that happened this week that I think we should talk about, which is this really bizarre encounter that uh, Bernie Sanders and Martin O'Malley had, the two other Democratic, or three there's other Democratic candidates, at Netroots Nation, where, so you have this segment of the Republican Party that seems to be semi-large that's supporting Trump, but then you had on the other side also folks who are not going to get the nomination being shouted down while they were denouncing billionaires, while they were calling for an increase the in Black the minimum Lives wage Matter, by please. the Black Lives Matter folks. And that was just this sort of outburst of unreasonableness on the left side of the party. And so neither one of them I handled think, terribly well. And, and I think Wait, it's explain like the nature of their complaint, though. This is at, a, at the kind of base of the Democratic Party. And, and they're, they are saying things that the base should be cheering, but there is a group that is shouting them down during their speech because they are not talking only about Black Lives Matter or and the all. issue... Or, or well, at all, to be fair. Um, well, they might have gotten to it on their own. But in any, it seemed to me watching this week, it was like the extremes of both parties had some kind of yeah. secret meeting right. where they got together and said, how can we most alienate normal voters? And oh. they did a pretty good job. All right, a week of alienation. We hope for <laughs> harmony and community later. Thanks to all of you. We'll be right back with some analysis on the Iran deal. Stay with us.